we go. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for joining our informational webinar for today. So this is regarding the Washington Youth Sexual Health Care Project at the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board. And today we will go through the application process for the RFP, including some questions that are related to the grant and a little bit more background of what this grant is specifically working towards. So we're so excited to have you. I will continue to move forward on our presentation slides. And then we also have our state partners and a few of our project partners who are on this call that will um, join us in a good way. So before we get started, uh, one of the great things is um, the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board is located in Portland, Oregon. And so we like to uh, recognize and um, do a land acknowledgement for the surrounding uh, tribal communities that are located along the Columbia River and many indigenous nations. So we want to honor those whose traditional and ancestral homelands at the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board offices are on the Multnomah, the Clackamas, the Clackamas, Tumwater, Wallatola, Bands of the Chinook, and many other indigenous nations along the uh, Columbia River. So I love to introduce myself. My name is Selena McCray. I am Navajo, originally from um, the Southwest, but been working with the health board for the past about seven years now. Um, my clans are Twitichini, Nishlek, Ani Bashichi, Tatnisani, Deshiche, Ki, Ani, Deshinele. And I've been um, built a wonderful Pacific Northwest family here in this region. So I feel very honored uh, working with and um, also building a great network with the tribal communities here in this region. And so I serve. Um, uh, as again, working with this wonderful team here as a project manager, but I still love to introduce the rest of our team with our WISH project at the health board. So I will turn it over to Dr. Stephanie Craig Rushing. Would you like to introduce yourself, Stephanie? Sure, good afternoon, folks. I'm Stephanie Craig Rushing. I work uh, with this team at the health board and oversee our adolescent health projects. So we have a team of about 10 folks that help promote adolescent health, both working with youth themselves, but also um, working with health educators and other caring adults who work and support Native youth. So i um, really excited to share today the opportunity to work on the WISH project with us. And um, I will kick it over to Asia, who is also um, working on this project with us. Thanks, Stephanie, and thanks, Selena. Hi, my name is Asia. I use she, her pronouns. I am Choctaw, Irish, and Japanese. I'm originally from Oklahoma, so that's where I come from, but the Pacific Northwest is now my home. So I'm really excited to be here and work under this project with Selena and Stephanie. Um, I serve as the sexual health communication specialist, so that means I do a lot of social media messaging regarding sexual health and a lot of content for youth, and that's my background on this project. I'll kick it back over to Selena. Awesome, thank you, Asia and Stephanie. And now I'd love to turn it over to actually our project partners who are really spearheading this wonderful grant. Um, our Washington Department of Health team, uh, as we go further into the presentation, we'll talk about a little bit more about our unique partnership. So we do have our, our co-project director, uh, Rabiha, also Brad, we do have a couple of the team members here, so I'd love to turn it over to Starlene for introductions. Thank you so much, Selena. My name is Starlene Maharaj Lewis. I am the newest, I feel like I'm the newest person on the team uh, with you all with the WISH and the Teen Pregnancy Prevention Project. Um, as it's listed there, I'm a project manager, and so I, I am a month and a half in, so I'm learning my way on finding alignment areas and how to explore, build out um, some of these alignment areas and also where we can really energize some of this work. So that's where I'm finding more and more where my fit is. I am happy to pass um, it along to Bonnie. I guess I see you next on the list. Hi, thank you, Starlene. Good morning, everyone. My name is Bonnie Burlingham and I am the lead evaluator for this project. Um, so I work on the evaluation um, and the data collection. And I work closely with our partners 
um, on all aspects of reporting. Um, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to Claire. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Claire Horton and I work on this grant as the performance coordinator. So I work um, with all of our sites on collecting the data for our performance measures and assisting with the evaluation plan and reporting. Awesome, thank you team. Great, so that is our, our project partners. But in addition, we actually have uh, another third leg as part of this wonderful partnership. So um, you'll see here, we have um, three wonderful partnerships working under the SWISH grant. And our mission with the health board is to assist Northwest tribes to improve the health status and quality of life of member tribes and Indian people in the delivery of culturally appropriate and holistic health care. And uh, we serve the 43 federally recognized tribes in Washington, Idaho, and Oregon. Uh, with this, this grant specifically, uh, this grant was funded for uh, the Washington state. So we are focusing here within Washington state tribes. However, we are still offering technical assistance and also resources that we'll be sharing uh, with, the, with the rest of the region in our service area. So that's including Idaho and in Oregon. Um, but I'd love to turn it over to the state to talk about a little bit more about um, their Department of Health and including the OSPI, their Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction. Sure, thanks, Selena. So one of our other state level partners for this work is the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction. And um, that's just the really long name for the Washington State um, Education Agency. So the K through 12 Education Agency. So they're a really important stakeholder for all you know, projects relating to youth, especially youth sexual health and with our changes recently in our state um, with the legislation for comprehensive sex ed. Sometimes that relates to this, the implementation of this grant project. Um, so we've partnered with them from the beginning. Just also, you know, it's part of our strategic partnership for them to be included for this grant, but they are also, um, they, they implement a statewide survey about youth sexual health and kind of the experience that youth have when accessing sexual health, but also the experience of um, receiving sex ed in schools. And so that data is available for, for all of us who are implementing the project and can be really helpful too. Um, we've reached 5,000 young people so far this year through that survey effort. So that's a large part of their project. Super, thanks, Claire. So moving on into um, talking about the funding agency. So what are, where is this wish grant really coming from? And, uh, you know, learning more about that particular area. So the Office of Public Affairs at the US Department of Health and Human Services really awarded 13 organization for what they call a tier two innovation and impact network grant. Um, and the key element here is achieving optimal health and preventing um, T pre pregnancy and really uh, a different set of key priority areas. There's really seven key priorities here, areas that are related to this specific grant. Um, they are caregivers, uh, expecting and parenting youth, foster care, child welfare, juvenile justice, youth engagement, and youth with disabilities. Um, the last element here, Within that seven, area, seven areas also includes youth access to and experience with sexual health care. So um, that is the, the main area of this grant here is focusing within that content. So our partners with the state uh, will focus in this area. And um, we were awarded this funding back in um, last year, which is starting um, back in 2000. Uh, 19, right? I'm thinking the top of my head here. I'm just remembering the years as of last year. Still it's so like hard to keep track of this, but I, our grant would have started in June um, of 2020. Thank so you. we are in our second project year right now. Absolutely. Thank you, Claire. So uh, yes, we we it's a, it's a three year project. However, we on our uh, second year, as Claire mentioned, and so really this RFP is actually opening another opportunity, another window within this three-year three 
process. So any applications uh, from here forward will really be at uh, a two-year project. So we'll go into a little bit more details uh, further in the presentation. Um, great, so within the Northwest Portland Area and Health Board, ideally at the beginning of the grant year from our, our first year, we were recruiting four to six Washington Tribal Health Department school-based programs, local um, uh, IHS tribal and urban clinics, and then also youth engagement programs who had bi-directional impact on youth and their access to and experience with sexual health care. And because we're in the second year, uh, we are really also looking at a range of even just one to two sites right now, but you know, there's some possibilities. And so we're really excited to, to really, again, call out to the Washington State tribes who are interested. Um, the great thing is we love to engage, again, with these tribal health departments, um, school-based centers, uh, again, youth engagement programs. So this can be at the, your local uh, youth centers to, um, uh, after school programs, um, different departments that are leading those efforts in all, all these different specific areas. And really how the funding does impact year after year is really contingent on approval from uh, OPA, but also the state and also the completion of these project deliverables that we'll go through. Within the application that we will also continue to go through, we have uh, just specific areas of according to like work plans and budgeting. So these uh, activities can also be um, shared on that, that process. So we will go through that as well. The tribal um, subcontracts will range from 65,000 to 100,000 per year. And again, it'll be a funding of total two total years. So we're looking at this year and then the following years, the third and final year within this grant process. So according to our particular RFA, RFP timeline within the health board, we have opened the application process back in August 10th. And right now, today, as our informational webinar is giving you a little bit more details and insights of what those application is, what the application is and some of the expectations, uh, we do have uh, applications. They are due uh, usually at the last week of each month coming up here in this next couple of months. Um, they all will be reviewed on a rolling basis. So if you decide to submit your application, um, if you notice the application was open on the 10th and then you are currently working on it right now, we do have a deadline for next, next Monday. However, um, there's also continuing uh, deadlines coming up in September, October, and November. Uh, once your application is submitted, we, we will review and then um, the site will be notified um, by the board within two weeks of that time frame. Um, if you're unable to make today's session, we will have uh, reoccurring office hours every Tuesday and Thursday going in through, through September. So if you have additional questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to our staff members, but also uh, uh, join us on these uh, morning sessions if you're uh, able to, to just kind of dissect the application a little bit more, or if you have any particular questions of different um, plans and proposals that you may have. And then also, if you're also very curious about how to walk through the application, you know, I think that's something that our team can really help you go through that process if you want to, um, in a way, fill it out together or um, kind of walk through that. And we're more than happy to review it too. So if you feel like you're halfway through the application and you're curious if you're going the right direction, we can review that as well. So um, just kind of give you a little bit of start of what the what that looks like in terms of um, once your application is submitted and approved, what are the next couple of steps in terms of logistics to get the program running and off the ground. So um, usually what will occur is uh, this planning period that we have in place to so just really give it an environmental scan, uh, looking at some of the community needs and some of the community assets in your area. But if you already have the established, great, no worries. I think it's great to also um, enhance on some of the existing resources that you have in your community. Um, so what this really is with this environmental scan is definitely helping you to organize that your community if you have not yet have gone to that process. Um, and really, it's just really helping understand communities uh, where they're implementing um, co 
co comprehensive either sexual health education, either programs, either areas that you feel that would really um, benefit within this um, application and the grant process. Uh, we're also wanting to look, and I'm sure you also too are really ready to look at the different uh, readiness of the community, especially when you're interested in an intervention. And then obviously general attitudes um, and behaviors. And then, so really this will just help create a foundation and baseline of the community information um, as we progress into this project for monitoring and improvement. We also have uh, additional tools that are available for you regarding quality improvement processes. So we call this uh, our we call this our learning agenda, but it's really a guide for you just kind of make sure to see where we're at going through this process together and where we can help support regarding um, some of the goals and objectives that you have in mind for your project. Uh, and in addition, with um, so that learning agenda also falls into a second bullet of the QI plan, a quality improvement plan and including evaluation. And then also with the health board, we uh, within our application require a risk assessment to be done uh, through our contract processes. So that's something that we will coordinate with you and your departments um, to move the application or to move the contracts forward once we get through that process. Wonderful. So, um, now we will dive into a little bit more of what the project deliverables are for this specific particular grant. So again, what does it mean to improve access to an experience with sexual health care? Um, to give a little bit more um, information and what that looks like for thinking about the projects that you want to establish or even enhance in your community, um, some of the things that we want to really engage on is a really youth focus. So ensuring that the youth have a voice and that's the big nugget of this grant project as well. I think the interesting thing is um, helping youth to ensure that um, there's a lot of youth friendliness and non-stigmatizing sexual health care services will really help engage youth at that level. And then also um, some of the things that could be intimidating like improving youth literacy, especially around insurance or privacy laws. Um, you know, we as adults, I think as ourselves are still trying to figure it out but I think a lot of youth who understand some of those key areas can also help improve their self-efficacy um, when it comes to creating their own, um, um, being involved in their own health and making those autonomous decisions. Um, <clears throat> so with this project deliverable, uh, we'll be working closely with the state as well with this partnership and including building what we call this WISH network. So along with uh, some of the subrecipients from the state level, but also from the tribal level through the health board, we are wanting to create this wonderful network to help ensure that we have um, resources and technical assistance and all these great services to really share out. Uh, I think right now with our first cohort uh, within this first year, we already have um, established some really great baseline information and really great resources to share with everybody on different type of topical areas. So I can't imagine how awesome this next year will come up to be. Um, <clears throat> much of the effort will be focused on interventions with clinical settings, but the network also includes, again, some of those bi-directional impacts on youth. So again, school-based health programs, youth engagement programs, um, that all, again, relate back to youth experience and their access to sexual health care. Uh, some of the outcomes we're also uh, looking forward to is reducing STIs, improving access to wellness of sexual health, improve the patient experience. So again, talking about self-efficacy, self um, having comfortable making their own appointments, um, being comfortable into the environmental setting there. And then also um, looking at the providers themselves too as well. So really improving provider comfort and confident with providing youth sexual health services. Um, a big area also for, I know, majority of our sites is really culture appropriate tools. Um, this also includes inclusivity and also uh, sustaining, again, this wish network that we're trying to establish. And I think uh, the great thing about some of these things that come along with this is, again, can't really uh, emphasize how, how impactful the youth engagement will be. So really thinking about your tribal youth councils or some of your youth leadership who could really benefit are some of these after school programs um, that are happening as well. Additional grant activities. Uh, these are just kind of some uh, bullet regarding um, some of the things that were discussed. So again, carrying out the local needs assessment, setting goals and priorities. 
um, implementing again selected culturally um, relevant curricula or campaigns or sexual health um, education tools or trainings. Uh, the great thing about this is again that uh, you as a site can, can pick a culturally selected or community selected intervention. So um, depending on what that looks like in your community, I think that's something that you can totally run off with and make it make it as part of a proposal for this project. Additionally, offer youth friendly gender affirming preventative health screenings for youth, including sexual health services for our two spirit LGBTQ teens and young adults. And especially improving the communication and linkages between youth serving programs so building those networks and partnerships within the community or externally would be also pretty helpful and again engaging the youth we do understand too even though these grant activities are, are highlighting these specific direction and area that the grant was also written pre-pandemic so we are totally flexible on what's happening and also um, being aware of uh, how dif tr different travel sites are exercising their sovereignty when it comes to the current COVID situation, making them some changes here and there, um, maybe having to do some shutdowns and, this, and such. So we do understand that some of these um, activities um, could be um, <clears throat> a way of um, adapted and flexible. So we are, our, and the state here and our team here are totally open to um, knowing that and being aware of that. So we we are looking forward to seeing some applications that may come through. Um, we just want to share a few uh, some supporting activities uh, regarding this grant. So um, in addition with your proposal, some of the great things is offering staff uh, FT and training uh, within our application. Uh, the great thing is, again, you yourself as a site can select a community selected intervention and then also federally approved approved indirect rates, uh, participating in part, state partner meetings, regional and then including ours. So, again, really building that wish network and then uh, getting to know additional other sub recipient sites, too, who are uh, funded currently. So, again, just uh, again opening your open more networks and adding more tools to your toolbox and of course this niche wish network that we're building that we're hoping to engage a little bit more further uh, we do have a little bit of examples here um, <clears throat> so some examples coming from this grant could be implementing of a youth-friendly standardized risk behavior screening tool um, so it's something that we have available in terms of some tools and some recommendations but also if you feel that's something that you're noticing in your community, that'd be really great. Uh, trainings for health centers and organizations serving youth, especially when it comes to um, gender affirming care, um, inclusivity, there's um, some great things. And then also uh, looking at implementation for comprehensive sexual health education for um, grades K through 12. I know there within the state, there are is um, currently um, legislation that is really um, advising that to happen. Uh, we do want to emphasize too that even though these are examples within such community selected interventions, it's really important that within this grant that we are exploring, um, also developing, testing, and refining and evaluating these interventions. So um, although this is something that will move forward within your projects, we do want to ensure that we're able to identify those evaluation piece and testing pieces to ensure that, you know, again, the big nugget here is improving youth access to and sexual health services, and then also including learning about what works for them, how is it working, for who, and then also why. So um, yeah, just something to keep in mind as you're continuously to brainstorm what that looks like. Um, moving into the application, uh, here uh, within the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board, I'm just going to share um, an, a fun, exciting uh, development to our, our website at the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board. And I am going to put Asia on, our, on the spot as our sexual health communication specialist. Uh, she could talk a little bit more about our webpage and then um, just let me tell me where to go, Asia, and I'd be happy to scroll down for you. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Lena. And I think we can just work from top to bottom and make it easy for everyone. So yeah, just like Selena mentioned, this is our new WISH website and i um, really excited about it because this is going to be like your one-stop shop. It will, we will try to put 
to the best of our abilities, everything you'll need there, as well as our contact information. But yeah, you'll get to see like at the top our partnerships and who we are and what we're doing. And below that is the funding opportunity that Selena mentioned. So this is really awesome because you can download your application here and you get, you know, the basic details. Excuse me. And then, yeah, keep going, Selena. And here we have our wish survey. Um, this is a survey that we are distributing um, regarding the wish project. Um, again, this is for Washington youth only, and I believe it's for ages 13 to 20. So if you have folks that you'd like to send this to, this is an awesome place to direct them to our website. And we also have a QR code, so that will help with that too. And then below that, are our resources. So we work a lot with We Are Native, Healthy Native Youth, um, the Paths Remember team. We also put our Indian Country Echo on here. So these are all awesome resources. Um, a lot of these work with youth, educators, um, parents, caring adults, our Two-Spirit and LGBTQ community, as well as providers. So if you're interested in that stuff, we would definitely recommend checking that out on our website. And then last but not least, at the bottom is our sexual health messaging. So these are downloadable. All you gotta do is do the classic, was it right click and download? Yeah, there we go. Perfect, Selena. So yeah, that's all you gotta do. And feel free to like download these and you know, print them out, put them up in your center, stuff like that, um, things like that. And that's available for you all to use as well. So yeah. And that's pretty much the basic of our website. So definitely check it out. I'll put the link in the chat. And as always, you're more than welcome to uh, message me or Selena if you want um, the link again. And yeah, thank you. Sweet, thank you, Asia. Um, let me go back here. So um, the great thing about the website is you can find an application there. So in the recording from this informational webinar will also be housed on there. So you're more than welcome to go back and look at some of those details. And we'll also have the Zoom link for our check-ins that we're gonna have every Tuesday and Thursday if you have any additional questions. Um, great, so the application is, has really four areas, three to four areas, um, looking at the project narrative. So the youth population, some of the data systems that you have currently in place or experience, and then uh, some of existing programs and community strengths. And then also challenges. So this includes like uh, COVID as well too, but also either other challenges in your community regarding, again, youth access to an ex experience with sexual health care. Uh, we do have details within the budget justification, uh, a work plan, and then this is optional. If it's required for you to provide a letter of support um, or even a tribal resolution, we're more than happy to accept that as well. The project narrative is also no more than two pages. So um, it's a very uh, short and sweet narrative that we love to hear more about your community. A budget justification, because of the grant as mentioned above is uh, funded year per year. Uh, we're looking at a uh, budget for budget justification for one year. Um, and then if you provide any examples beyond the deadline for this physical first physical year, um, you know, we more than have more than love to check it out a little bit further. But again, just kind of keeping in mind that that's where the funding um, source will be. We do have a template available. So we just it's um, kind of just an easy plug in. So you're more welcome to put the information in. Um, consulting costs. So if you're interested in any trainings or anything like that, you can offer that kind of support. Uh, equipment, um, training costs, supplies, travel, and indirect ex expenses. One thing we want to point out within this is, I know I love to have maybe Clara Bonnie um, clarify regarding some of the supplies and what um, funds are acceptable and what funds are not necessarily acceptable for this project. Selena, yeah, I can jump in here a little bit. So when we think of supplies, we're often thinking of supplies um, related to implementing your project. So sometimes that's um, incentives for youth or um, the costs of materials to implement a program, um, but it's not actually like supplies for like medical supplies. That would be a not allowable expense for the grant. Um, the actual costs of health services are not included as part of this grant, um, but other items like, you know, stipends for youth, if they are, you know, part of the project as an advisory role, that definitely would be allowable. And 
anything you need to actually implement like a curricular project with youth would be allowable. Super, thanks Claire, that is helpful. And then lastly, uh, looking at the work plan, um, again, we do have a template available within the application. So just wanted to hear a little bit more about the detail overview of your activities that you have in mind, your proposed activities, uh, projected timeline. So within this grant year, um, uh, we started in July or yeah, July 1st through June 30th. Um, but you know, it's just nice to kind of hear what some of the projected timelines that are coming up and what ideas you have. Uh, resources and then of course staffing um, and the contract scope of work will be based on this project so are on this work plan so that's something that we'll be utilizing and then again hearing some of the existing programs of describing how uh, what you have in store already will really enhance and uh, further support um, some of the current work that you have established so a lot of great things and now, um, again, talking about these wonderful interventions that we have in, uh, have suggested, but also, uh, again, the big takeaway is ensuring that we're able to um, test and, and check out some of the reviews from these interventions. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Claire and Bonnie, who will talk a little bit more about some of the performance measures and reporting requirements as part of this grant. Yeah, thanks, Selena. So for this grant, we will collect data from you um, on a monthly basis and then also on a semi-annual basis. And this is done through a secure survey um, based out of REDCap, which is a HIPAA compliant um, application for surveys and data collection. And the kind of the main areas that we're collecting um, information from you about are how you're engaging with youth and stakeholders. So like, for example, the number of youth that you were engaging for this project during the project period. And then we also asked you about the formal um, partnerships that you have formed. So that's with other organizations who you're working with to implement your project. And um, another area that we ask about is training. So that could be trainings that you offer to others as part of your project, but also trainings um, for you or your organizational staff. Like for example, if the providers at your clinic went through um, a training about providing youth-friendly services, um, that would be counted there. And we also ask about dissemination and outreach. That's often things like social media posts, um, but it could also be a presentation at a local or national conference, things like that. So some of these we collect monthly, um, but things like, you know, did you present at a conference? We're only asking you that twice a year. And so parts of these questions, they're required by the federal grant. And so they don't always tell the full story of what you're doing and the impact that you're making in your community. So we also ask a lot of qualitative questions. Um, and that's your opportunity to actually tell us the story of what you're doing. And we use that to not only share information across our network, like Selena's talked about, it is about operating as a network as a whole and like sharing lessons learned and learning from each other. But it is also the qualitative information helps us round out the information for reporting. Um, and it's more than just the numbers. So when we submit a report to our federal funder, we have that information to share with them um, to represent what we're doing because the standard performance measures, they don't fit every project perfectly. And we'll work with each site um, to make sure that everyone is, you know, understands how to collect and report on these numbers. And Bonnie, who is our lead evaluator, will work with you and Selena to set up an individualized evaluation plan for your project. Um, so we're available throughout the process. And it's something that we, we hope that everyone has you know, some dedicated time to do for part of the grant, but we also want to make it as user-friendly as possible. Bonnie, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Thank you, Claire. I think you got it all. Um, 
we have an overall plan for the network also. So when you participate in any network or group activities, you'll get a survey about it. Um, you know, what did you learn from everybody? What would you, um, what would you like to see? Um, and occasionally we might ask you to implement a survey for youth or providers in your organization if it's something that works for you. Um, not all sites will do it, but some want to get feedback directly from youth they're working with or from the providers. And so, um, and so we help set those up and we would, we put them all into our um, secure database. So it's fairly easy to collect. And if you have any trouble with it, you can always submit information through Selena um, to send to us too. So there's lots of different ways um, and we are just open to working with you however works best. Thank you. Thank you, team. And then the next slide, I just have a screenshot of REDCap. So I don't know, Bonnie, if you wanted to continue further here, just kind of talk about what that um, software looks like uh, for folks who are gonna be utilizing this. Sure. So you'll put, for example, you know, in this box over here on the right. So these are our performance measures. You'll put your number of partners um, and then, you know, you'll see that there's a next question. You can put it in the box over here. And when you get to the end, you can save halfway through and go back to it. It'll give you a code to come back in. Um, or when you submit it, it'll automatically send you a PDF copy of your responses. So you'll know that it's been submitted. So it's pretty user-friendly and um, it even looks better than on this slide now. I think we made this slide earlier and then we learned a few more tricks to make it look a little bit more user-friendly. Um, so it's just kind of like a regular survey you fill out online and then you submit it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. We can also help you if you are interested in creating your own survey, um, we could help you put it into REDCap and then you could access it that way too. So we have a lot of flexibility with that. Super, thank you, Bonnie. Um, and great, well, that concludes the informational webinar for today. Again, we were able to just kind of comb through some of the details and give you an overview of what um, the expectations are for the RFP. Uh, here's our contact information from the board specifically. So either Stephanie, myself, or Asia, um, our emails are here. Um, so feel free to reach out to us. And if you're really interested in also talking with the state, uh, we'd be happy to relay their contact information to um, upon requests. And so I love to um, kind of open a door or open the floor up to the rest of our team members here. Um, also Starlene, Asia, and Stephanie, if there's anything else you'd like to add. Um, as part of um, this uh, wonderful journey that we're going to go on, uh, hoping to get some people to join. I think the only thing I would add, Selena, I see Michelle is on the call too, that, you know, our other sort of team members that work at the board around um, sexual health curricula would be happy to work with communities too, um, to help select curricula from the Healthy Native Youth website portal and walk folks through the process of implementing. Um, we have a really beautiful community of practice that comes together monthly to talk how through the process of um, supporting educators um, who are implementing health curricula. So um, we have a lot of other tools sort of in the background of communities are looking for additional support um, selecting curriculum. That's a really good idea, Stephanie, thank you. And I just wanna share the screen here with our um, audience that this is the Healthy Native Youth website. Um, and so if you wanna to go to healthynativeyouth.org and the community of practice that Stephanie is referring to, you can go here to the resource page and here it's called community of practice. Um, the team is doing a great, wonderful, great job creating um, their, um, I think it's year four of community um, a practice, which is exciting. So you'll see a number of topics here coming up for the next academic year. But also, uh, you can also look at previous recorded sessions 
Um, and they're very exciting, a great library. So we highly recommend checking this out when you all get a chance. Great. Well, I think that's it for today. I just wanna thank um, all the staff who were able to join and um, for participants and those who are submitting proposals. Uh, here is a wonderful team if you wanna put names to faces. But we all hope you have a wonderful, great day and um, good luck. And we look forward to your applications.